All right, everyone, so let's go on. The last thing that we did here was we went through the process of installing WordPress. And again, normally, you won't have to be so in-depth like this. You won't have to create your own database and set up all of this stuff. <coughs> normally, you get GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, and they've got a button that says, Install WordPress. And then you're here, basically. We've had to do it the hard way because we need a server. We need a database. We need all of that. And I have all the instructions here. So um, at this point where we've left off, we're, it's time to get acclimated with what WordPress has to offer. So if you've never used WordPress before, this will be a great look at it. If you have used WordPress, it might be a little bit of a refresher. But it's important to understand the tool that we're about to see. So wherever you're at, make sure that you're in the dashboard. If you are looking at the main site like this, you, you want to make sure that you're under the dashboard. And you can tell because it says dashboard on the left here. There are many sections in, in WordPress. Uh, from top to bottom, we see here dashboard, posts, etc. We'll talk about what each of them means and why you would want to use them. But I want to show you one thing that always impresses people right away, especially if you're new to WordPress. Notice how um, my site, this is, this is my Hello World site, this is the site that happens as soon as I install WordPress. Well, it looks really boring, I think. There's not too much interesting, and the, the design looks boring to me. Black and white looks really boring. So one of the great things about WordPress is that you can change the design of your site with one click basically. We change it from this boring design to one that has some nice colors and textures and a brand new theme, a brand new style. We're able to do that in WordPress pretty easily because again it's a CMS. That database that we created now has a bunch of data stored into it. What's the color on the top? What's the name of the site? What's the product? And so we can go in and go to the screen where we change the theme and then the data changes from theme A to theme X and everything else like the about page and the products page the content stays the same just the design changes so let's actually do it again it sounds technical and esoteric but we'll see how easily it works over here on the dashboard we should have a section that says appearance Notice if you hover over a section, sometimes a little pop-up happens. So if you hover over Appearance, click Theme. Or if you clicked on Appearance, it just pops open like that. But you want to go to Themes under Appearance. And again, we'll look at all of these screens, but here's the first one. Under Themes, which is under Appearance, this, these are the three built-in themes. 2014, 2013, 2012. The current active theme is 2014. And there's a little preview of it right here. The preview makes it look nicer than the actual live site because it has content. But let's look at this. You've got 2013, and if you hover your mouse over any theme, you have some buttons. Hover over 2013 and select Activate. Then it says here, active theme is 2013. Go to visit site again to actually see what it looks like for regular users. So you're going to get used to that, doing something in the dashboard and then visit site. And then go back to the dashboard to make more changes. So visit site. Look at that. There's, it still says hello world. It still has that content, but a brand new design. Look at that. That footer area and these little sections and there's a navigation bar here. Sample page. Hello world. So simply by changing the theme we have changed the look of the whole site and none of the content itself changes. That's one of the great things about WordPress. Let's go back to the themes again and try the other built-in theme. So that means you hover over the name of your site again, and you can go to Dashboard. Question? Yeah, I'm sorry, I have to keep that back to 
I'm going to show you right now again. You go back to Dashboard, and once we're in the Dashboard, we want to go back to Appearance and Themes. And so let's say now I want to activate the 2012 theme. You hover over the theme, you see some buttons appear. Hover over the 2012 theme and select Activate. So 2014 was the was the default one. It was kind of boring. 2013, I turned it on and it looked kind of nice. Let's see what 2012 looks like. I'll select Activate. We should then say here the active theme is 2012. You need to go back to Visit Site to actually see it. And here's the trick. If you, um, if you hover your mouse over any link and then right-click, you get the option of opening a new window or a new tab. That way you don't have to switch back and forth. You can have two different windows. And in one window is the back end, and in the other window is the front end. So I'm going to right-click and select Open Link in New Tab. So now at the top here, I've got two tabs. This tab will be my back end, and the other tab will be the front end. That's optional, of course. But I'm just showing you, you can jump back and forth. So 2012, not as boring as 2014, um, but still, still a little plain. But notice the design of this one is two columns. You can have a column here of content, and then a column here for other stuff, like uh, recent posts or archives or whatever. I'm going to go back to the themes. Let's go back to themes again. So WordPress is free software that's been around, um, I should have looked it up, 2007, let's say, 2008. It's been around a little while. And it's uh, called open source software, which means that the code of it is freely available for people to download and edit and improve upon. That's different in contrast with closed source or proprietary software. Think about, for example, um, if any of you have used Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver is a software to make websites from Adobe, the company Adobe. And that software is closed source, which means Adobe will sue you if you try to reverse engineer the code of Dreamweaver to change the way Dreamweaver works. It's software that they invented, they put it out there, they sell it, it's closed source. Uh, WordPress is open source. There's a company, there's a group behind it that invented it, but they put it out to the world for people to use and to be able to edit and improve upon for free. You're not going to get sued. Um, so the software is, is open source. It's updated on a regular basis. Notice what I'm seeing here in the themes section. Update available, update available. All of these themes can be updated. Don't worry about updating anything just yet. I'll explain in detail the pros and cons of updating, but for the moment, ignore anything that says updates. Don't update yet. But WordPress, also as we saw here, WordPress 4.0 is available. Don't update now, even though it's telling you, please do it. I'll tell you pros and cons later. But speaking of open source, as I said, people can update it, add to it. For example, three themes, is that good enough for my website? This website that I sell my products, I envisioned my website to look better than any of these samples. Well, people all over the world create WordPress themes and put them out for free. There's also some that are for pay. That's how people can make money. And that's perfectly fine. So I want a different theme. I'm tired of these three. I want a different design to my site. Notice at the top here we've got Add New, Add New Theme. Let's click that. In the Themes section, click Add New. And what we get then is connected to the WordPress theme marketplace, where it shows you here, these 15 themes are featured at the moment. So I get a preview, for example, Weblazar. Notice how that looks. 
We got Hathor. Notice how that looks. Minamaze, etc. It might be a little slow because we're all accessing it. Car, Rectangulum. So these are people making themes, putting them out there. Many of them are for free. You'll know which ones are not for free. There'll be a little buy now button. But notice, like, let's say I saw this one called Landline. Oh, I like that. It's got a nice big picture in the background, and it's got an area for my content. So I have a couple of options. If you hover over any theme, you get a preview. That way you can kind of see what does it look like before I commit to it, even if it's free. So any of these that you see here, try to click Preview. That's what it looks like. Oh, I see when I scroll, the background is fixed in place, and then my content scrolls on top of it. So WordPress can be used out of the box with three built-in themes, or we can tap into, no kidding, probably a million different themes, or at least several hundred thousand. There's lots of themes out there. I'm going to click Close at the top left. I'm done with that preview. Uh, what does MH Purity Light look like? I can click Preview. It looks something like that. Yeah, if we find a nice theme that we like, then we will see in a moment installing it, and then we will tailor it to how we we like. I, I can't say that always they will be free, but definitely the ones that are not free, there'll be an option there that says buy. So notice we're looking at featured. Let's look over at popular. So this will load up with the popular ones. Apparently 2013 and 2014 are popular. We've also got this other one, 2011, I remember that one. And then we've got Colorway, all the way back 2010, Human, Virtue, Editor, I Feature. Let's see how that one looks. I'll preview. There it is. So after you've previewed a few, let's install it. Whatever one you've seen here, whatever one you like, we should have an option to install. So whichever one it is, click to install. What will happen is your site will connect to the WordPress server. It'll download the theme. It'll then start to tell you it's unpacking it, it's installing it, it's successfully installed. But you have to remember to activate it or else it's just installed but it's not active. All right, let's select activate and then visit site and you'll see that your content is still there, but now it's got this new theme. Yeah, if you know, uh, if you've heard of that buzzword of, of responsive, that's a website that will change to the size depending on the person's screen. Some of these sites are not design, designed responsively. Respond, yeah, responsively. So that means that if the site picture is big, it won't look good on an iPad or a mobile device. So if you get a responsive theme, it should grow and shrink to the size of your screen, like this one. I've shrunk my screen a little bit and notice it automatically looks nice on this smaller size. So that's the only way to tell if it's responsive is by holding it that way? 
this is one of the fastest ways to do it. You know, you, you preview the site and then you grow and shrink the size of your screen and if it grows and shrinks well, then it's probably responsive. When you're buying a template, it wouldn't necessarily pop up on here. You would just upload it in? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Can you have a different thing to say that you have a website with two different pages? Can you have a different thing for each page? Or you have to do the system? No, actually, that is a limitation. The question is, can I have a different theme for different pages of my site? No, you do have to have one theme, and it applies to all your pages. However, if you know how to do website programming, you can write code to do that, but that's pretty complicated. So all the, the pages have to have the same layout? All the pages will have the same layout, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Depending on the theme, and we'll see this, some themes have anticipated that. It will allow for your home page to have one column, and then your about page to have two columns. So depending on the theme, the theme author, they might give you more options, but every theme is different. So how many pages does the average site in? Well, that's up to you. That depends on what you're trying to do. For example, the Texcoco site, the, that Mexican food restaurant, that one has probably... It has a lot of pages because it also has blog posts. So I would say that page has like that site has like 30 pages. The Italianissimo site, the Italian food, that one's only got about four. So it really depends on what you need to show. Most likely you'll have a home page, probably a contact page. Those are the two I recommend, home and contact. And then, well, products page, you might have 20 products, so you might put 10 per page, 5 per page, 20 per page. So it's up to you how many to have. But at least home page, contact page. All right, so... I downloaded this theme. I really like it. I installed it. My website will have this theme. Here's the problem, though. Um, I got this theme from the popular, from the popular um, screen here. If it's popular, that probably means other people downloaded it. And this is the thing. I downloaded it, and so did maybe a hundred people in the rest of the world. So my site is going to look exactly the same as 99 other people. So we have this th themes marketplace where we can quickly find themes here, popular, featured, or latest, because people are making themes all the time. You can go to latest, and maybe you can get this theme here, Garfunkel, and no one has it yet. But then a few months down the line, someone else gets it, and a few months down the line of that, more people have it. So now your site's not unique anymore. And that might be okay. Or you might really need to have your site be unique, like no one else's. I'll talk about that in a moment. But we've also got the ability to, um, to filter. If you select Feature Filter, you say, show me all sites that are in the theme of blue that are related to um, some other features, like e-commerce. Let's see, what do we have? I want blue, give me all blue sites that have four columns, and then I'll click Apply the Filter. This will scan all of the possibilities and give me sites that have been organized as having blue theme with four columns. I thought there was an e-commerce, but I don't see okay. it. Mm -hmm. I see photo blogging, but I thought there was e-commerce. But uh, so we can uh, we can kind of dig a little bit deeper this way, instead of the popular or recent or featured. This is a this is a possible way to find a site that not everyone has. 
um, if you if you do the the preview of any of these themes, you get a, a little bit of detail down here, what its features are and such, and also you get a star rating. So that way you can see what other people are saying about that theme. This one doesn't have any ratings, zero ratings, so that's not too helpful. Um, somewhere a little bit kind of hidden, I believe there's a place where we can see how many times it's been downloaded. So we'll see, well this one's been downloaded 98 times. This one's been downloaded 12,000 times. I'm going to run into someone else's site that's exactly like mine. So this is one of the this is one of the downsides of WordPress in that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things that we can do with WordPress. It's it's very powerful, but it can it can be it can be generic. Your site can look like someone else's site, especially if you're going to choose a theme that is popular. So, in my opinion, there are three levels of WordPress themes. The basic level is to simply find a theme, activate it, and start using it. <coughs> the problem there is that your theme might look exactly the same as someone else's. Depending on the theme, you might have an option over here, for example, customize or theme options. Depends on the theme. If you don't see theme options, it's your theme. The author of the theme might have added features or not added features. But for example, the theme that I've got installed, I can click on the left here, customize, and I've got a bunch of things that I can do here, background image, colors, etc. So again, depends on your theme. Mine's up, got these things about a first footer widget and a second and a third, etc. So we'll look at this. Depends on your site. Mine didn't put my site at the top. I put my site name at the bottom. So it depends on your site. It depends on your theme, that is. Um, so you might be able to customize your theme a little bit here so that it doesn't look exactly the same as someone else's. That's still, in my opinion, level one. You've found someone's theme, you've activated it, maybe you did a bit of customizing here, but still it'll probably look very similar to someone else's. The second level of WordPress themes, and again, we'll go into detail, we'll be able to go to a screen where we can go in and edit all of the code of the site. We'll be able to go in, and if we know some HTML or CSS, we'll be able to say, change the font like this, change the background color like that. That's the second level. It, it relies on downloading an existing theme and then customizing it. Like, think about the example of someone that buys an old beat-up classic car, but they want the chassis, they want the, the, the heart of the car, and then they put on top of it, the you know, they, they restore it. So this is second level. We take an existing theme, we customize it. That requires, however, a knowledge of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP to varying degrees, depending on the theme. Those are programming languages. Those are web programming languages. A lot of you are not web programmers. A lot of you, you look at this and it's like, that is gibberish. It is. It's gibberish un until you learn it. Um, but this is the second level of customizing a theme. Start with an existing one because you like that it's three column layout. You like that there's an element on the top right, but you need to put in your own background gradients, and you need to customize details of it that are not available under the friendly customize screen, or even something like a theme options. Mm -hmm. No, and like I said, I'll get to this screen in detail a little later, but you'll be able to edit every page. The third level 
um, WordPress themes is to make one from scratch. And that requires, again, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP experience. Um, that is totally beyond the two classes that we'll be talking about this month and next month. That's pretty advanced. But the college does offer a dedicated class called Creating Your Own WordPress Themes. Um, it's in the catalog. There's an instructor there that uh, I don't know who it is, but he or she will go through this and get very detailed. But that's the hardest level. In my company, I've done all three. For some very simple websites, all we need is a theme. Customize it a little bit under the customized screen here, we're done. For some, we've taken a starting point and ripped apart the code, and then we're done. And then for a few, a few of them, we start with a blank sheet of paper and start to write all the code manually. That's the hardest way and the most expensive way. So the cheapest way, if you're going to hire someone, is that they start on the level one and customize. The next level up of expense is the start with this template and edit code. And the third level is write a site from scratch, most expensive. So where are the advantages? Is there any advantage from doing it from scratch? Good question. I see. Maybe being I see less of an advantage of the hardest level of making a site from scratch. It's too time-consuming, too expensive. I don't really do that for many clients anymore. I do the level two. We, we, we meet with a client. We show them examples here. I like this one, but I want to customize it like this. And then we'll go in, get our roll up our sleeves, get dirty, and write the code. And then very few of them that really need a cheap website, we do the basic theme, and they're done. So the pros and cons are basically about budget and time because the... The most advanced level, it, it's just not it's not cost effective anymore. So let me get a show of hands. How many of you have experience in any programming language? Any amount of experience? Okay, a few of you. How many of you have experience in HTML? Any amount of experience? All right. How many of you have basic experience in HTML? Intermediate? Advanced experience in HTML? One and a half people, maybe. Okay. What about um, anyone having experience in JavaScript? Mm -hmm. Any experience in CSS? Any experience in PHP? Okay. If if you are able to raise your hand for all of those technologies, you want to hire that person because <laughs> they're getting even if it's basic or intermediate, they are getting some of the experience to really be dangerous in WordPress. Dangerous in a good way. Um, for most of us, then, if we're just trying to sell our products, I don't want to know any programming. You'll be able to still do what you want, most likely via going to customize the theme, or depending on the theme, you might see something like theme options. Well, this one's interesting. I can easily go in here and add my own logo. I can go in and add some top features, whatever that is, style. Footer. Oh, here's a place where I plug in my Facebook address. So it depends on the theme. This theme that I downloaded, Colorway, it seems to be pretty nice, pretty powerful. But it's going to tell me, why don't you upgrade to the Pro version? You'll get more capabilities. How much does it cost? Well, each theme costs different amounts. Um, we have a variety of themes we can choose from built into WordPress and searching, but I'll show you other fee other ways in a moment. Question? No? Okay, so um, one of the big things, uh, we haven't talked about the other sections and such, which we will, but one of the big things is is the look of it. We do judge a book by its cover. We do judge a website by its cover. And you probably will as well because you want your website to be unique to you and to sell your product effectively and to look nice. Um, so let me show you another resource that you can do here. Uh, if you do uh, just uh, if you just go to any search engine and, and do a search, right? I'm going to go up here and search wherever and just search for um, 
the best WordPress themes 2014, let's say. So I go in there, and I'm going to get lots of results. 10 best free WordPress themes from Softhelp. Um, the best WordPress themes of 2014 from bloggingexperiment.com. 120 best WordPress <coughs> themes 2014. 90 best themes. So there's plenty of websites out there where they, they have themes. Uh, and they notice I did not write free themes, so you might get the best premium themes. And you see that word premium, that usually means pay. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of other places besides built into WordPress to find themes. Let's say I wanted to check out the best premium themes of 2014. So let's see here. Boundless. Okay, I can get a, a, a demo of it and then more info. X theme. That's interesting. Avada. Mosey. That, might, that one might be interesting. I want to learn more. I can go to view live demo. And then each site will then give you instructions. How do you install this onto your WordPress? But let's say I like this one. I like it. I'm going to buy. Here's some of these prices. Prices range all over the place. This one seems to say... This one... What I see more and more are are, are websites that specialize in selling WordPress themes. So you might buy a subscription to the site and then have access to 100 <laughs> themes. This one seems to be that if you pay $39, you can buy this theme, this single theme. If you pay $49, you have access to all their other 100 themes. And then I guess for $79, you'll get all the themes plus the HTML versions plus the Photoshop files. So you'll see the different levels of what you're getting for your price. And then right here, for example, for this price, you do not get all the themes. Uh, there's no annual recurring cost, access, new themes for a year, no, yes, here. Access to the HTML file, yes, here, but not there, but yes, there, etc. So every place sells things differently. Uh, let me show you one of these, a couple of these that I recommend. I've never heard of CSS Igniter but uh, they might be good. Here's one that I recommend, um, elegantthemes.com. I've used this one. And again, even me as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a company that I do this stuff for clients, as I said, I do all three levels. I might um, just choose a really cool theme for them, and I can set it all up. Because again, you want to sell your product, you don't want to do the hard stuff. You don't want to do this back-end stuff. So they hire me, we talk to the client, we browse these themes. I like that one, sold, we set it up. The next level up is, okay, I like that theme, but I want to really customize it. Okay, no problem. We know the code, we're going to go in, we're going to edit it. And the third level is, okay, I don't want to start on any theme basis. I want a brand new website from scratch. No problem, get your checkbook out. It's the most expensive way. For most of you, I recommend level one or level two. But here, Elegant Themes, they've had, they've got 87 themes, so not a lot of them, but they've got 253,000 satisfied customers. For $69, you get access to all of them. You get tech support. That's the thing also with WordPress. Unfortunately, it's kind of you're on your own. You download the software, and there's plenty of manuals on how to use it, but you're on your own. You have to read it yourself, kind of learn it yourself, take a class download a book, etc. If you buy a premium theme, often you're also paying for the tech support. You send them an email saying, I'm trying to get my video on the right side. How can I do that? They'll answer you. These free ones that you can download from here, most likely they don't have tech support, especially the free ones. The premium ones usually do. The pricing here. $69 per year if you're a personal, 
$89 if you're a developer, like myself, for example, and lifetime access, $249, one time. These are per year. $249 is still a pretty good price for all their themes, and they're going to keep adding themes every year, improving them. Are you, are you able to create different, you, different that's different URLs? that's part of what you have to read in the fine print ah. each company might have a different stipulation so the question is if I have access to this theme can I use it on 20 of my sites I don't know you have to you have to read the fine print per okay. theme some themes you you pay $69 and you're able to use it on your one website no problem but then if you want exclusively so that no one else can buy that theme, then it's $900. No joke, it really ranges. You can pay $69 and anyone else can pay $69 and have your site. And then you pay $900 and then no one else can have your site. And then also depending on the, on the, um, on the contract, it might say, okay, you bought this site for $50 and you can use it on two, you bought this theme for $50 and you can use it on two sites. You buy, you pay a hundred dollars, and you can use it on five. So it depends on the theme authors. Uh, elegant themes is a cool place. Here's another one. This one is um, themeforest.com. This one says they've got 16,000 templates. If I look down here, the thing is though they, they, they sell themes for WordPress and Joomla and Drupal and other platforms, so you have to be careful which one you're looking at. I'm going to look on top here. Theme Forest, show me only the WordPress themes. I'm going to look at all of them related to e-commerce. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. But here under Theme Forest, if you go to the WordPress section and go to e-commerce, this will show you many sites that are optimized for e-commerce. So let's say I'm browsing around, snapshot. I can go and look at a preview. This one is $63 for this theme. Over at Theme Forest, it was access to all of the themes and such. Everyone varies, like I said. Uh, I'm going to say I like snapshot. Give me more details. I, I can pay $63, $63 for this license. And notice it says use by you or one client in a single end product which end users are not charged for. The total price includes the item price and buyer fee. That one is basically saying if you are buying this for yourself, $63. We've got other here, extended license, $3,150. Use by one uh, used by you or one client in a single end product which end users can be charged for. Now that would be more for me. I would buy this so that I can make the site for you, because I'm going to charge you to make the site. So that's that's why there's that price. You for yourself, $63. And then somewhere else here it also shows about exclusivity, because someone else could also pay $63 and get that same theme. I can pay some exclusivity fee and then no one else can buy it anymore. Unfortunately that does not then force people that had bought it before you bought it to take it down. But that's why you get to level two. You get a theme, you use it as a foundation, you customize it so that you might have the nuts and bolts like someone else, but then you've got all of the, all of the design and all of the style different from everyone else. So 
what I like about Theme Forest is that you can go here and you can read uh, about the developer. You can read that this was bought 42 times, so not too many other people have bought this. I'm not going to be in a lot of competition. Some here say it's been bought 2,000 times. People write comments, people write give votes. There's not enough votes to give you a good consensus yet. When was it last updated? It's compatible with all of these documents, uh, all these websites. It's responsive. It uses these technologies, etc. You get the tech support. This is an elite author. What does that mean? They've sold more than $75,000 worth of content on this site. So they've been around. They've been on the site for six years. So this is a good place to go to get your perfect theme. Um, that's the thing that we can do with WordPress. We can all start with the same starting point and then build on top of it, adding a custom theme. We'll talk about plugins and widgets. We'll talk about the difference between pages and posts. We'll talk about adding text. Uh, photo or video content, and then of course we'll talk about adding products. So for the moment, I don't recommend to invest in any theme yet. Take this class this month, learn what I'm going to teach you about the basics of WordPress. As you get good with it, then decide, okay, I want a premium theme, or I want a, a, a different theme, and, and then we'll learn about the e-commerce aspect, and then you'll be on your way. So then once you have a website, um, is that where your search SEO is Yeah, that then comes into the point about you've got a website, how do people find it? So then I teach an SEO class. I'll mention the other classes that, that I also interlock with this class. But we've got a website, and if it's a really nice website and no one knows it's around, right? If a website falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, did it make a sound? Well, if no one knows your website is around, no one's buying your product. So that's where SEO comes in. So I'll talk about that in a moment. But um, question? Can you say that a little louder, please? Oh, uh, no. No, you can actually, um, you don't need any of that legality stuff yet, technically, but it would be useful. And I will touch on that as the, as the semester goes on. So um, just to, as kind of a preview, all that we really need are to set up, uh, you don't even need a merchant account technically. You just need some sort of bank account. And then we're going to need a PayPal account to capture the money and then put it into your account. Uh, but if you want to be the most above board, you know, you want to set up a business license. You can go to the, the courthouse in, in, in downtown San Diego and get that set up for like um, $45 for five years. Seller's permit, um, not necessary at this point really, but we'll be talking about all of those details as the, as the semester goes on. Yes? Question. I was told that when you buy a um, thing that you need to make sure it's compatible with Bootstrap. 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 Um, no, uh, Bootstrap is a very good um, foundation for modern websites, but it's not the only one. There's plenty of other ones. There's one that I like called Skeleton. So what this is just, maybe what you had heard was, you know, you want to make sure it's compatible with Bootstrap because it'll be the most compatible with many web browsers and such, but there's many of these foundations that will work. And if we look on this one, for example, it will probably even say what it's based on somewhere. Um, but you don't quite have to worry about that. If you're if you're getting a pretty modern theme, you know this one was last updated, you know, very recently. So most likely, it's using the most modern technology, and it says here it's compatible with all these browsers. Now, notice it says it's compatible. It knows it's compatible with WordPress 3.9. That's why I'm saying don't go to 4.0 yet until all of these plugins and such and themes know that they have been tested with 4.0. Yes? Can you create your own theme by being supporting the artwork? You can, we'll, we'll definitely be importing our own artwork, but about creating our theme, that's sort of a different question. 
when I talk about creating your own theme, I mean actually writing the code to make the theme. You, about adding your own artwork and content to it, definitely will be able to do that. Like here, if I wanted my picture of my cupcakes, we'll be able to do that. If I want my own background color, most likely we'll be able to do that. What I'm saying is to create your own theme is to write all of that. It's like building the engine of your car. We're not going to go that far. We're just going to give it our own paint job. That's easy. All right, so there's still plenty to talk about, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the lecture in a moment. Time is almost running out. And um, what we're going to do then is um, uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the classes, like I said, classes that interlate with each other, in interlock with each other. And then we'll do some lab time, probably 20 minutes or so. Uh, so I try to do a little bit of lab time at the end of each day. But what I want to make you aware of is these are the other classes that I'm teaching that you might find useful. If you go to uh, the college's website, sdce.edu, and yeah, the printed catalog tells you that too, but this stuff changes all the time, so I would get used to going to the digital catalog because you can also search what you're looking for. So go to sdce.edu. And at the top right, click Take a Class. Take a class, and then here you can type in keywords. Let's say I want to learn more WordPress, type that. If you want to learn more HTML, type that. If you want to learn, if you want to see what other classes I'm teaching, type my last name, Campos, C-A-M-P-O-S, and then change the the order here. Click on the start date. This will show you everything that's going to be offered in chronological order. If you click on start date, and you'll see that I'm currently scheduled for this semester to teach 15 classes. Not all at once, but this month of September, notice I'm teaching four classes in September. Uh, days and times are all listed there, but the ones you might care about, so today's class, Fridays, e-commerce, WordPress, social media for your business. So one aspect of getting your website found is to promote it, to advertise it. In the real world, if you find out about a new restaurant, perhaps you got something in the mail, uh, or you heard a, uh, an ad on the radio, or you saw something on TV. Advertising. Social media is a form of advertising. We might have the perception that, uh, that social media is the place where the teenagers go to be mean to each other. Sure. Social media is the place where people go to find the latest cat videos. Sure. Social media is the place where people go to post what they had for breakfast. Sure. But social media is also the place where companies advertise themselves for free. Right? You have to pay to get on the radio. You have to pay to get on the TV, on a, in, the, in the mailbox. So if you take social media for your business, we're going to talk about setting up social media profiles, setting up Twitter, Facebook, and using it, setting up Pinterest, Google+. This class, though, is online. So if you don't do very well online, you might wait for the face-to-face -face version, which will be in October. But starting next week is this online version of the class, and the way that works is I'm going to have videos for you. You're not going to come to class. You're going to go to a website and watch the videos as often as you want and learn that way. And I'll try to help you via email. So if you want instead in person, wait until October. The other class you might be interested in starts next week on Monday, Search Engine Optimization, Search Engine Marketing. This is the one where we talk about what are the tactics and techniques and the pitfalls of, of getting your site found when someone does a search? How many of you, on a regular basis, crack open the phone book and look stuff up there? <laughs> how many of you still get the phone book on your doorstep? Okay, but how many of you do not right away recycle it <laughs> or use it as kindling? Um, so the phone book had its place for decades, and now this is my phone book. I've always got it with me. I search. 
Google search, Yahoo search, Bing search, whatever. I search. That's what we need to deal with now. We need to deal with how do we set up our site so that the search engines know about our site and can find our site when they search, what's a good Italian food restaurant in Chula Vista? And if you search that phrase, for example, one of my clients pops up page one. How many of you search on, do a search and then go to page three? Very few of you. How many of you go to page two? A few of you. How many of you expect to find what you want on page one of the search results? Most of us. And that's what SEO is, search engine optimization. Trying to set up our sites so that we are found on the first page. Because the more we use the internet and computers, the more impatient we are. And the less we want to deal with going to page 20. Google tells me there were 10,000 results. But if it's not on the first 10, I don't care. Your customers don't care. So SEO is about all of that. That class starts next Monday, uh, 12.30 noon to 3.30 in this room three weeks. Mm -hmm. Three weeks? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then October starts, and you can look at that on your own, but everything is listed here, so I'm going to be doing the second level of this class next month, Friday, same bat time, same bat channel. That's the e-commerce aspect. I'm going to do the social media class again. I'm going to do Google for advanced users, blogging as an SEO tool. In the SEO class, I mentioned how blogging is important for SEO. That's offered in, in November and December. So there you go, 15 classes from now until January, all interrelated. You want to sell products? Take this class. You want your site to be found on search engines? Take the search engine class. You want to get uh, activity through social media, take the social media class. You want to learn about blogging because that's important for SEO, take the blogging class. You want to make an Android app uh, for, your, for your company, take the Android class, although it did start already this week. Mm -hmm. It's kind of advanced. But um, these are all the classes that are there. They're all interlocking. They're not required that you take this class before you take that class. So you can take this this Monday SEO class, while you're taking this one, you'll be fine. They're usually three or three and a half hours long, usually in the evenings, but a couple are in, at noon. Any questions? They range between three and four weeks, but that one is going to be three weeks. In the blogging is an SEO tool, there's three different, same class for three different times. Yes, same class. So if you can't make it in November, come back in December or come back in January. Or whenever. Um, I noticed that you were recording this. Is it available to audit on YouTube, any of your classes, or anywhere else? Uh, I'm, this is the first time I'm trying that, actually, okay. so I, I'm not exactly sure of the quality of all of this. I, I'll see after I'm done with it. But what I've been doing is I've been recording the lectures so far today. I'm going to then try to put them online and give you guys the link, and then if you want to go back and watch the videos again, hopefully this is all set up properly because I haven't done it in this lab. But um, probably I'll have some videos for you. Any other questions? All right, so um, all the work that we did today, don't worry about it. It'll be for naught. You don't have to take the work that we did here today home. It's more of a process. We can't simply copy the folder to a flash drive because there's a database with connections and all of that. It's a little more complicated to transfer a WordPress uh, site from computer to computer. We will do it next time, however, once our site has more content and is more meaningful. Today was all about what's the software do we need that we need in setting it up, getting a little bit acclimated to WordPress. Next time, we're going to do it, get much further, and actually save your site to take it home. So don't worry about saving your work today. If you want to get a preview of how that's going to work, look at sheet number four. Sheet number four does explain all of this. I'm not going to do it here. It's not necessary today. We'll do it next time. So we'll have lab time until 1230. Thank you for coming. Make sure you enrolled in the class. Check with me if you're not sure. Make sure you signed in. You don't need to sign out, but make sure you signed in.
printed your name legibly. I need to be able to read everyone's name. There's at least one name that's a little hard to read here. Make sure it's not yours. And uh, thank you for coming, and we'll be back and learn thank more you. WordPress. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.